All right, this is just to uh, show you that uh, I'm basically doing all of the things that are in uh, Vinyl Nirvana and the Thorns sites with regards to cleaning the springs. So I've got uh, some soapy warm water, um, talcum powder, and uh, here I've got a spring set that I just pulled out of the water and I've cleaned it with a uh, magic brush so the spring is nice and clean. Drying that off and then you put it in the talcum powder basically to um, coat the spring and then that basically prevents uh, moisture basically um, corroding or oxidizing on the spring and rusting it and all that sort of stuff so it's uh, cleaned right down to metal with a nice coat of talcum powder. I've also cleaned off the uh, the rubber um, standoffs or grommets or whatever you want to call them and uh, they get nice and dried off and put back into their positions. I've already done these two so uh, I've just got the screws on right now and then of course once I flip her over then we're gonna have to uh, tune the suspension so we get the nice bounce that's uh, called for on a sprung table like this. You can see it's very clean inside and uh, what we will do is try to get this thing tuned up so that it's in an ideal position. Then of course you have your, uh, your um, transport screws right here so if you ever wanted to uh, ship it that would be get everything set up for the uh, the proper uh, suspension and then what you do is you screw everything down to prevent it from uh, getting jostled around during transport and shipping. So um, we'll get back to assembling and uh, flip it over and we'll do a little bit of filming I think of the uh, suspension tuning, tuning. So I've got some cans as uh, Dave on Vinyl Nirvana recommends so I'm not, on, not on any of the switches or the arm or anything like that and it makes it nice and solid and stable so you can work on it from upside down uh, the spindle of course I've got removed the inside platter and the outside platter and then I've got tape on the other side just so all that all the oil doesn't goop out of the uh, out of the uh, the bearing well so uh, without further ado we'll carry on with uh, with the job at hand well, the other part I didn't show um, that's, uh, that Dave does when he does his uh, setups is what you want to do is you want to find the weak side of the spring and it's actually pretty easy to tell. You can tell by how easy it curls over and which, which is the stiff side and which is the, uh, the loose side I guess you'd call it or the easy side so that's the stiff side there. And you can pretty much guess that right on the opposite side, that is actually the floppy side. So what they say is on the floppy side, you face that towards the inside spindle. So there it is right there. So we put the spring on, basically facing that side. And I have that set up on all three of those uh, binding posts there. And of course you want to make sure that each of these posts are tightened down so that it's not going to go loose on you. And if it goes loose then obviously it's going to, the setting will, the suspension tuning will go out of whack real quick. Lastly I also wanted to uh, point out, so these are the, uh, the, the typical feet that come with the, uh, with the Thorns turntable with this uh, sort of press board uh, bottom plate and what I'll be doing is replacing that with either half or three quarter inch MDF as many uh, recommend to stiffen up the bottom side and improve the sound characteristics um, what I'm going to do is replace the uh, these feet and when I get the thicker bottom plate I'm going to put these uh, conical feet on which are adjustable so you can uh, balance the table and then they rest inside of uh, these. They've got a rubber bottom and then there's a little hole that the, uh, the cone fits into so that it uh, isolates the, uh, the bottom 
Uh, it is a sprung table, so you don't really need it, but uh, it's just another, another added bonus, I think. Really amazed. So uh, for those that uh, have been following this um, thread on this forum or any other similar threads or forums on uh, setting up a Thorin's turntable, this is a dressed up uh, TD-165 that I modified um, just to make it look a little bit slick. haven't really done much other than uh, adding, of course, a... Uh, a vinyl which actually act, acts to dampen the uh, the turntable considerably uh, vinyl uh, top coat that makes it look like a uh, I guess a carbon fiber kind of look and also a vinyl uh, a red vinyl for the uh, the plinth covering but the uh, the heart of these things of course is the suspension uh, system that they use so it's three springs basically underneath you've got a spring over here spring in the back corner and a spring over on this side and in order to properly tune these you have to actually get them up in the air take the bottom off and as you can see you can see the springs under there so i've got one i'm trying to point and shoot at the same time so you've got one spring right here you've got a spring back in there and then a spring back, you can just barely see it around this uh, padding here, this cloth padding that I'm using, back in there. So ultimately you want to get the, uh, the turntable, or the platter, and the suspension. Uh, so the platter is tied to the tone arm in a uh, suspension by those three string springs, which isolates it from the actual uh, plinth, or base of the turntable. So... One of the hardest things to do is to get these things tuned properly so that you get that magic bounce. And I think I just managed to do it. And I'm pretty tickled pink. So I got this uh, little uh, 8 millimeter bolt assembly. Uh, I cleaned up the springs really good. I think I've got another video that, I'll be, that preceded this one that will show that. Um, and basically clean them up put uh, talc powder on it just to make sure they don't rust so it absorbs any moisture on them because you don't want them uh, degrading. Um, there's also a method of finding the weak side of the spring which you actually face towards the, uh, the uh, spindle assembly here or the, uh, the bearing assembly. And uh, once you get everything tuned up, and then what I've found was a trick. I've got these really neat little rulers from the UXO program that I used to belong to. And this scale right here, the millimeter scale, for this particular unit, and what I'm going to do is when I, or I'm going to keep this uh, with this turntable and the one I have upstairs, because what I'm finding is, um, what I'm doing is I'm measuring the distance from the top plate to the underside of the outer uh, platter assembly. So I want to measure the distance. So obviously what I want to do is have the same distance all the way around so that it's nice and even, nice and balanced. As you can see, the bubble's in the middle. So I've got everything totally balanced off. And actually I've measured the, uh, the platform or the, uh, the top plate here with a bubble that I have down there. And everything is true, both forward, backwards, sideways, and angular. And then, of course, I throw a bubble onto the... Uh, across the uh, head shell assembly just to make sure that it, the, uh, the head shell isn't canted in any direction. So you want to make sure it's uh, true and it is indeed true. So once I get everything set up, I set up these paint cans just like a gentleman by the name of Dave who was, um, I guess operates Vinyl Nirvana. Very uh, well known uh, foreign's enthusiast and uh, maintainer and uh, the trick is of course to get that mythical bounce and I think I got it so basically what you do is you just pop it and this thing is just it's like before it used to wobble side to side um, I'm a little bit shaky so I don't know if you're seeing that I don't know if I can hold this straight enough I'm hitting it a little off center Bang. 
so you can see that it actually bounces up and down straight up and down for about four to six seconds seven seconds kind of thing and instead of jiggling it's actually just a real it's it's a pistonic motion and uh, that ladies and gentlemen is what you're seeking on one of these things so what I did was I used this uh, scale and what I found was if I went so zero was too low it was actually grounding out so if you see this marker here uh, right there that spacing from there from the top plate to zero is where I kind of started and that was too low it was actually grounding out on the bottom so then I tried six or uh, uh, one millimeter above and then I went to two millimeters above so at two millimeters above that was that's perfect so I went all the way around and then I started hitting the bounce and you can you know, do a quarter turn or so on the uh, on the screws and then basically once you got that then with these screws down below what you want to do is get some um, you can get that blue stuff for uh, lock nuts so it basically locks the, the bolt in place so that it doesn't uh, it doesn't drift or uh, uh, turn out and go out of setting so they've I, I can't remember what this stuff is called but you can see remnants that actually it's kind of dark here but you can see remnants of the bluing that's on there and that basically what it does is it sort of uh, glues the uh, the bolt into place so it doesn't rotate and uh, and go out of adjustment so um, some say you can use uh, nail polish I actually have the stuff up in my garage so what I'm gonna do is now that I've got it set I'm going to go back and apply that blue stuff to the uh, screw and uh, now that I've got it uh, tweaked just the way I want it I think that's the way to fly so um, once I do that then uh, I've got the bottom board I still haven't made the MDF one I got really busy this weekend but uh, once that uh, once I get Probably get my neighbor to do it because he's got some fancy tools and just take this over and say, hey, make me a three quarter or half inch MDF um, board exactly to these dimensions with holes, you know, for the uh, so you can lock down the springs for transport and everything. And of course, the uh, the cable pathways for the cables and everything. So uh, once I got that done, I'll button everything together. And we shall have a pretty smoking turntable. Uh, oh, one other thing I have to do is uh, I'm going to change out the. Uh, you can see on the turntable, these are the remnants of the. I don't even think these are original. Well, yeah, they, I think they are original actually, but I don't think the uh, the, the RCA heads are original because they used to use a molded uh, plastic type, but. Uh, I think what's happened is they've cut it down so that's how long it is very short um, there we go so I'm going to replace those and even one of them is shorter than the other you can see so fix that the power cord works good and uh, once I solder a new uh, RCA jack onto it we can button her all together and I think we have a turntable that is ready to go so thank you for watching obey all further alarms